10 Untold Truths of Thomas Petro. At this point, I have no idea where to start. I mean, with the constant drama he's diving into, it feels like drama can't escape him. So at this point, who doesn't know about Thomas Petro, the infamous star from the Hype House? He started from Team 10 House to making his own content house. Rather than stalling this video anymore, this is 10 Untold Truths of Thomas Petro. Before this video starts, drop a like if you are a fan of the Hype House, and with that, how about we start from the start? Number one, life before the hype house in the Team 10 house. So how about we talk about what he was doing before he founded and created the hype house? Yes, that title didn't fool you all right. He was an ex Team 10 member. So if you ever heard that name somewhere else than the hype house, it is because he worked for Team 10 house, a content house made by Jake Paul. So. What is his work for Jake specifically? Well, although he hasn't confirmed what work he actually does in the Hype House, some say he is the manager, some say he is the editor, and some say he's a photographer for Jake. Not too far off from what he's actually doing for a living as often as he does gigs for a lot of Instagram models. What he does confirm in his video where he talks about this topic is that he is just another member that helps around the Hype House. Not too specific enough, pal. Although we wanted to put the videos as a reference, a while ago Thomas privated a lot of his videos, so we sadly can't show you the video. The video talking about the reason he was fired was also privated, but the gist of the video Thomas privated was there were problems in the Team 10 house and one problem piles on top of each other, so he was let go from the Team 10 house. So knowing that he was fired from the Hype House, he took some odd jobs being the photographer of various Instagram models. One of them was Daisy Keach. Daisy, seeing how Thomas was fired from Team 10, hired him as one of her photographers. Of course, when they got close, Thomas asked Daisy and some other creators he has been working with about his idea of making a content house on their own. Number 2. Not giving Daisy her fair share. So when the collective started the Hype House, there was Thomas Petro, Chase Hudson, Daisy Keach, Alex Warren, and Kuvar Ennen being the founders of the Hype House, with Thomas giving $5,000, Chase Hudson giving $18,000, Daisy Keach giving $18,000, and Kuvar Ennen and Alex Warren collectively giving $5,000, totaling in $46,000 that the group needs as a deposit to rent the Hype House. Knowing that Daisy gave a very large sum of the money to jumpstart the house, Daisy thought that she earned the spot as one of the co-founders. Of course, she couldn't be at the Hype House 24-7, so she sometimes wasn't in the Hype House. So Thomas accused her as she didn't manage the house often and came to interviews the collective was having. Of course, Daisy denies the claims as she was often on many interviews, of course not as often as Thomas. But it was pretty reasonable that she was shown in many interviews and videos. For the claims that she also doesn't often manage the house, Daisy fought back saying that allegedly Thomas is the one who doesn't manage the crew right, as he was very over controlling and doesn't manage the hype house correctly from a legal standpoint. And yes, that too is going to be our next standpoint. Let's start from the overall controlling. Number 3. Over controlling. Thomas has been deemed by the group as a leader that is very over controlling with his surroundings, aka his group. Every Every single thing must be done his way, as it is how Daisy frames the story. The way Thomas handles a very stressful situation is not the best, at least. From the start, we could see the cracks that Thomas formed in legal point of view. Thomas hasn't done anything to fix it, even though Daisy has mentioned it. Of course, Thomas didn't listen, and you might ask, what legal point is important to this narrative? Good question. Number 4. No legal footing. When the group first started, Thomas never really bothered with any legal footing. This includes any contracts, agreements, and cuts between the founders. The problem with this approach is the members and the other founders never got their fair share of pay and control of the hype house. The first member slash co-founder that confronted Thomas Petro about this is Daisy Keach. Being confronted with this information, Thomas didn't take this information very well and basically ousted Daisy from the group and don't consider Daisy as one of the co-founders. Knowing this, Daisy left the Hype House, and that is our next point. Daisy leaving the Hype House. Although it is not official, Daisy has left the Hype House. Daisy left the Hype House unofficially in late March, knowing how she was mistreated in the Hype House. She made a content house of her own and named it the Clubhouse. From the looks of it, she is doing great with her own content house with 1.1 million followers and 14.4 million likes in the Clubhouse TikToks account. So I don't think she would be missing the Hype House anytime soon, knowing that she was told that she had a shelf life by Thomas. Oh yeah, that is our next topic. Let's talk about that. Number 6. 
Daisy Keech's shelf life. Yes, it is unbelievable how Thomas could have added that comment to Keech's own lawyer. Of course, knowing that Thomas said that, it makes Daisy furious with all of the situation. She felt betrayed and gaslit with all the things Thomas did to her. Of course, at the point, Daisy realized that Thomas manipulated Daisy's emotions to recruit a big creator. Oh yes, Thomas allegedly did that. Let's hear it all. Manipulating a big creator to join the Hype House. Although Thomas and Daisy haven't confirmed nor denied who the big creator they are talking about is, it has been speculated by fans that the creator they are talking about is Addison Rae. It fits the motive as Addison Rae is a well-established creator well before she was a member of the Hype House. When she was asked by James Charles in a video how she was able to join the Hype House, Addison replied stating that it was actually an accident how she could join the Hype House. When there was a photo shoot with Thomas Petro and Daisy Keach, Thomas asked Addison to wear a white shirt and jeans not knowing it was a photo shoot for the group. Thomas also asked Daisy to be friendly with her so she could have friends in the hype house. When Addison asked about the whole snafu, Thomas just added that nothing is forced and just Thomas is just happy with her doing the photo shoot. Although I could see how Thomas may not have had a malicious intent in recruiting Addison, maybe Thomas just wanted to recruit Addison naturally, but the way Thomas asked Daisy to be nice to her so she could have friends in the hype house, it is just manipulative to say the least. Number eight, Jack of all trades, king of none. If any phrase could explain Thomas Petro better, it would be that one. Thomas is too fixated on controlling any aspect of the hype house that has led to the demise of the house. He is not only the founder of the Hype House, but he is also the manager who manages the groups, the finance manager, the gatekeeper of who could enter the Hype House, the manager that manages all the social media, manages all the brand deals they are making, manages all the merch, lastly, a spokesperson for the house. Well, he is managing a lot of things. As you heard of the many things he is managing, any sane person could see the many titles he owns and sees that is too much for one person to handle. Of course, Thomas being Thomas, she also misuses his title as the finance manager and misuses the money they gain from the Hype House, not for the members or the other founders, but for himself. Although it is technically legal from his standpoint because they haven't signed any paperwork working at the Hype House, it is also, to say the least, a very deplorable thing to do. You know what? Let's talk about the no contract situation. Number nine, no contracts. As you heard from the previous point, although no contracts means freedom and there's nothing tying the members with the Hype House, this also means Thomas coincidentally could use the Hype House to mistreat the members however he wants. Of course, there are moral norms in place, but technically speaking, Thomas could pay them nothing in exchange of exposure. Of course, any money they are making is given to Thomas as he is the financial manager and could do anything he wants. So in exchange for freedom, you are giving stability from a written contract that they could do a class action lawsuit if the Hype House ever did anything outside of the contract. This is why contracts are important in anything monetary related as said by Daisy. Number 10, no legal footing, part two. Okay, hear me out for a minute. When the first time I use this point is to express how he doesn't have a legal footing between contracts, in this point, we're going to express how he doesn't even have legal footing for the brand name Hype House. At the time when Daisy was urging Thomas to trademark the name Hype House, Thomas just ignores her. Wanting to trademark the name before someone else stole it, Daisy trademarked the brand in her name, knowing that she is one of the founder. This made Thomas mad and decided to fight that trademark stating that Daisy has no rights for that name and filed a trademark on his name. Daisy fought back, stating that the name was created by Alex Warren, another co-founder of the Hype House. At the end, Thomas won the case and Daisy left the Hype House. Of course, you know the rest. Okay, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Like the video if you are a fan of the Hype House and see you in the next video.